Hey everybody, we're ready for game three of the 1986 ALCS. I've gotten some people that wanted me to keep playing this one out, so I figured might as well. Um, like I said, I've gotten... APA still kind of not at the top of my list of games. It's growing on me a little bit, especially with the Merino boards. That's That helps out quite a bit. And uh, watching some of the Tabletop Earl's games have gotten me in the mood, so... That's why I started this, and then now I guess we're <laughs> kind of in too deep now to stop it. So, best of seven, ALCS. Right now, the Red Sox lead it two games to none. But now we're, California's back home. And looking at the defense, California's fielding team one, Boston fielding team two. Starting pitchers for game three for the Angels, it'll be the Candyman, John Candelaria. He is a 15 on his... Master Game Symbols. He's got an X, Y, and a Z. For the Red Sox, there'll be Dennis Oil Can Boyd, and he has a 10 on his Master Game Symbol, along with a Y and a Z. So we've got a candy man against an oil can. So that's, this should be rather interesting. We'll just go through the lineups as they appear in the game. Right now, John Candelaria on the bump. And leading off for the Red Sox will be Wade Boggs. So Wade Boggs stepping to the plate as game three is now underway. 44 doubles, usually pretty good, huh? 44 is a seven, you're not gonna stop a seven unless you're Cy Young. So that is a base hit for Boggs. Even though Boggs was a minus four against lefties, that would make him a 19, but you gotta be, to stop a seven, you've gotta be at like at the 29 mark. So Candelaire is a long way away. So leadoff single for Boggs. Let's go to the runner on first base chart for Marty Barrett. 61. 61 to 36. 36 says wild pitch runner to second. Wild pitch three only. Otherwise ball. Well, Candelaria. Candelaria only has a wild pitch one. So it's not going to be a wild pitch. It's just simply going to be a ball. And it's a 1-0 count on Marty Barrett. 66 doubles are kind of getting the Angels in trouble here. That's a zero. So Barrett to the second column, 56. And that is a six. That'll be a double. A double and runner to third. Fast runner scores. Boggs is not fast, so he will stop at third base. But you have runners at second and third with nobody out. And the big boys coming, Buckner, Rice, and Baylor. So the Angels in deep trouble here in the first inning. Infield's back. They're gonna they want to stop a big inning. They, they don't want to give up two runs right off the bat. So they'll lay back, get the out to get the run. I'm sorry to get they'll allow the run to get the out. You know what I meant. 62 is a 29. 29 is a ground out pitcher to first, runner on second hold, others hold. No, I'm sorry, runner to second, others hold. So, I'm sorry, I was looking at first and third, not second and third. Let me go to second and third and get it right here. So, 62 was a 29, and that says ground out, 1-3, runners hold. So, it was a ground out right back to the pitcher. Candelaria froze the runners, so that certainly helped. Buckner could not get it out of the infield to help his cause, and that will bring up Jim Rice. Definitely not out of the woodwork yet. Infield is now in with one out. But 55, it may not matter. 55 is a 7. It ain't going to matter. That's a two-run single for Jim Rice. And he takes second on the throw to the plate, according to this book. So Rice will go to second on the throw. So 2 nothing Red Sox on the single by Rice. And now we'll go to the runner on second chart for Don Baylor. 31. 31 is a 14, and that is a base on balls with the runner at second. So with the runner at first, it would have been two balls because Candelaria has the Z, but with runner at second, it becomes simply a walk. And Candelaria running into issues here in the top of the first. Brings up Dwight Evans. 24. 24 is a 13. That will help. That's a strikeout. Out number two. And it takes us to Rich Gedman, who is a minus 11 against lefties. 
So that's going to make Candelaria 26 if it gets to that. 21, and that's a 26. And that's an infield fly pop up to second to end the inning. But the damage done, whoops, didn't write in the runs there, did I? Didn't write in those runners scoring thanks to the Rice single. So it's 2 nothing Red Sox. And we go to the bottom of the first. Angels have their work cut out for them. And it'll be the oil can, Dennis Boyd. Dennis oil can Boyd. And he'll be facing off against one of the speedsters, Gary Pettis. Gary Pettis. 61. 61 is a 29. And that's a ground out to the pitcher unless he has an X. He does not. So it's simply a 1-3 ground out. 29 was the same thing that got Buckner in the first grounding out to the pitcher. Here's Joyner. 33. Here come the doubles for the for the uh, Angels. That's a 6. And 6. Let's see. He is a plus 3. Turns him into a 7. 7 has an M here. Does he have an M on his card? He does not. He has an L but no M. So the double is going to remain a double. And Joyner. A one-out double, and back come the Halos. That'll bring up Ryan Downing. 56. That is a 34. 34 is a pop-up to the second baseman. We're out number two, so Barrett brought it in, no problem. Two down, and here's Mr. October, Reggie. Reginald Martinez Jackson. 35, 14, 14 is a walk, so that's going to put runners at first and second with two outs for Doug DeSensei. Doug DeSensei. 54, 54 is a 32. 32 is a fly to right. That's, I shouldn't even have to look at the book. I should know that 30s are fly to left, 31s are fly to center, and 32s are fly to right. So I'm kind of getting that down now pretty much innings over so we go to the second still two nothing Boston and there the Angels are in danger of falling behind three games to none and being quickly eliminated all right here's Tony Armas still no sighting of Dave Henderson I guess he came along later 16 is a 28 and that's a ground out to the shortstop one away so Dick Schofield makes the play. One down. Brings up Spike Owen. 26 for Owen is a 27. And that is a ground out 5-3 unless the pitcher has an X. Candelary has that X, so it is a strikeout. So the Candyman trying to rebound from a woeful first. Going to face Wade Boggs. 54 is a 32, and we know it's a fly to right. I don't even have to look. Got it memorized. About time. Took me, I don't know how long to memorize that, but finally got it. All right, so nothing doing for the Red Sox here in the second. That'll bring up Rupert Jones, the right fielder. 21, that's a 26, and that's a ground out to second. One away. And that takes us to Bobby Gritch, speaking of second base. 33, more doubles, that's a zero. So Gritch looking to do something here. 13 is a six, that's a double. Double for Bobby Gritch. Double for Bobby Gritch. Now Boyd is, let's see, Gritch is a minus four, but a 14. There is no change to the 6 on a 14, so we're still with the double. Brings up Dick Schofield. 42 is a 23. And that is a foul ball. I'm sorry, a foul out to third base. Third base injured falling into stands. How about this? This is interesting. It says here, foul out to third base. Third baseman injured falling into stands. Um, I guess I'm going to go ahead and use the injury for this game, not for the whole series, but just for the rest of the game. So Wade Boggs 
is going to have to come out of the game. He did make the play on Schofield for out number two, but now we need a new third baseman. So the Red Sox will go to their bench and pull out a new third baseman. And that's going to be Ed Romero. So definitely a drop off there. No question about it. Ed Romero is a good fielder, but the hitting is definitely dramatically different. So Romero is going to take over at third base. He is a four, so they don't drop off too much in the fielding. They're still fielding column two. Wasn't enough to change that, but definitely with the batting is where you can run into issues. All right, so two down, runner at second, Bob Boone. 54, 54 is a 32, and of course that's a fly to right. Don't even have to wonder what it was, we just know it. And the inning is over. So, two complete in the books here at the Big A, and it's the Red Sox still holding a 2-0 lead. And the Candyman will be back out. Facing Marty Barrett. Barrett doubled and scored his first time up. 45 is a 14, and that is a leadoff walk. Not a good thing to have if you're the candy man. Leadoff walk. Now that brings us to Billy Buck. 36. 36 is a 14. He does have a Z, so it's a two-ball count. So he was able to fend that one off. 24 is a 31, and we know that's a fly to center field without even looking. Make sure run on first that doesn't change, it does not. So fly to center. One away for Jim Rice, who had the big uh, base hit first time up, big two run single. And he's going to do it again. 33 is a, well, not a single, but it's a double this time. Make sure there's no adjustments here. He's a plus three, which knocks him to a 12. 12, there is no adjustment on the double for a 12. And it says double runners to third, fast runner scores. Barrett is not fast, so he will just go to third. But Rice now with a single and a double. And the infield's going to have to play in. Here's Don Baylor. 34, 34 is a 31. That's a fly to center. Now we'll see if there's any, if there's a... Uh, chance for a sacrifice fly with runners at second and third. 34. I'm sorry, 34. Did I say 34? 34 was his roll. 32. I'm sorry, 31 was the result. That is a fly to center. And in the Marino Boards slash Master Book, there are these numbers here that I'm not all that familiar with. So what I'm going to do instead in its place is I'm going to the basic playboards for APA with runners at second and third and see what that result says. And we're just going to take that result. So runners at second and third right there and a 31. Fly out runners at fan well let's see fielding defense the defense for the Angels is a fielding column one so under field in column one, it says fly out runner's hold. So no sacrifice fly, it's just a fly out runner's hold. One of these days I'll eventually learn what all those numbers mean, but right now just going to play it close to the basic. All right, here is Dwight Evans, Dewey. 54 is a 32, that's a fly to right, and the inning, oops, wrong pen. The inning is over. It's a pain having to go around the camera stand to write and everything. It's kind of getting on my nerves, but use what I have. One of these days I'll get a camera that's like above my head or something and not in my way. But right now, I'll just deal with what we have. Make the best of it. It's better than nothing at all, I suppose. All right, so now we're going to the bottom of the third. And it'll be Gary Pettis, top of the order. These things off against the oil can. 52 is a 27. That's a ground ball 5-3. Let's hit the next, but he only has a Y. So, round out for Pettis. One away. Brings up Wally Absorbing Joiner. 
23. 23 is a 12. That's a ground out to first. Take into the bag himself as Buckner. Two down. And that'll bring up Brian Downing. 14. 14 is a 30, which is a fly to left. So the inning's over. Three complete in the books. It is Boston 2 and the Angels nothing. Candelaria back out. We'll be facing Rich Gedman. 64. 64 is a 13. Struck him out. Struck him out. One away. Poor Tony Armas. 56. 56 is a 13. Struck him out. So, two whiffs. Here's Spike Owen. 45. 14. That's a walk. So, couldn't get that third strike out in a row. It turns into a base on balls. Two outs. And here's Ed Romero, new third baseman. 16. 28. 28 is a ground out to short to end the inning. May have been a fielder's choice, but I'm not worried about defense right now. Or defensive stats or any of that stuff. I'm just playing the game. So, we go to the bottom of the fourth. Still 2 nothing. Sox. Oil can Boyd tossing the goose eggs right now. And here is Mr. Reggie Jackson. 55. That's good for Reggie. It's an 8. He does not have any change, and that's a 10. Can a 10 stop an 8? It cannot. It's a base hit for Reggie Jackson. Lead off single. Brings the tying run to the plate in Doug Desensei. 14. 14 is a 30, which is a fly to left. One away. Here is Rupert Jones, 42. 42 is a 13. That's, he's gone. Struck him out. Two down. So it's up now to Bobby Gritch to get the inning continuing. 42 is a 14. That's going to be a two ball count because Boyd has the Z. So it won't be a walk. It'll be a two ball count. That's a 34. 34 is a 31. And we know that's a fly to center. And the inning. So, three up, or not three up, three down, but uh, after the leadoff single is three up, three down after that. So, at the end of four, still two nothing in favor of the Sox. Start the top of the fifth with Candelaria. His fatigue is 23 batters. Right now, he's faced 19. So, bullpen activity is going for the Angels. Marty Barrett, 61 is a 36. And a 36 is a ball, unless he has a W, which he does not. So it's one ball count on Barrett. 43, that's a 29. 29 is a ground to the pitcher, unless he has an X. He does. It is a strikeout for Candelaria. Buckner, 34. 31, we know that's a fly to center. Two down. Jim Rice, 14, that's a 30, which is a fly to left. Innings over. All right, so three up, three down, go the Sox. Go to the bottom of the fifth. And the oil can back out to face Dick Schofield. Dick Schofield. 61, that is a 39, and that's a strike. He doesn't have a W, so it's not a walk. It's simply a strike. So we go to 14. We know that's a 30 again. So that's a fly to left. One away. I was watching a video a, way, while, while, a while back from one of the Apple bloggers. Uh, this is an older video, probably from a couple of years ago. And he was unboxing the basic boards, the new boards. And he showed the dice in the little cup and uh, just did a little sample roll for the heck of it. And he rolled a 14, and he said fly to left. And I'm like, wait a minute, 14 is usually a walk. Well, now I know what he means by 14 fly to left, because it seems like on every card, the 14 is a fly to left. So, now I know. All right, here's Bob Boone. 
and 11. Bob Boone's a zero, so when he's going to get a chance to do something special, perhaps 24. That's a six, so that is going to be a double. Not going to stop it. Uh, let's take a look here. Now, wait a minute. This may be interesting. He is a minus one, which makes him a nine. So a nine. Nope, I thought it was an 11. 11 would have been interesting because an L and an M, and he does have the L. But with a nine, it's simply going to be a double. So thought I had something unusual there, but didn't work out that way. Bob Boone, though, he doesn't mind the double. So one out double. 44 for Pettis, and that's an 8. He's a minus 1, so that makes him an 11. So the runner on second, and an 8, and an 11. Can an 11 stop an 8? It cannot. It's a single runner score, slow out batter to second. Well, Boone is out because he's slow, so he's going to be out. Doesn't say what, like I said, doesn't say where the single goes. Uh... It doesn't say single to center or whatever, so I'm just going to say it went to center by default. Not that it really matters. So the single from Pettis, and he will take second on the throw. But Booney is out of there. It's a slow runner. He is out. Could have played it safe, but didn't think about it. Here's Joyner. That's an 11. That's a 4. So Joyner, a 4, is a triple unless something changes. He's a plus 3, makes that a 7. Can a seven stop a triple? It cannot. So it's simply a triple for Joyner. And he picks up his teammate Boone for making a running blunder. And it would have been a tie game had Boone stayed put. But he tried, tried to be greedy and couldn't get it done. And now it's 2-1. to one. Here's Downing. 32. It's a 26. And a 26 is... Let's see here. Ground out four to three. That's third out, so it doesn't matter. They didn't have to declare infield inner inter back because it was automatically back with two outs. All right, but a run does score as the Angels get that triple from Joiner, and we go two to six. It's two to one, and now we'll wonder if Candelaria is going to be able to go much farther. He has now faced twenty-three batters, and that's exactly where he is. So usually if you have to go to fatigue route, you lose some of your ratings. So with some right-handers coming up, as in Baylor Evans, they're going to go to the bullpen. And they're going to go with Doug Corbett. So Doug Corbett, the new pitcher, taking over for Candelaria, who went five innings. Gave up two runs. So Corbett... And his number is a 10. And he is a Z only. Alrighty. So, Don Baylor, turn around, face the right hander Corbett. 14, well, we know it's a fly to left. It's just not even worried about it. So, not, not only did I learn that 30 is a fly to left, I learned that the 14 roll is the fly to left to begin with, so you don't have to look. Here's Dwight Evans, 21. Is a 13 struck him out. So two down. Not sure I like this where you automatically know what it is before you even look. 34 is a 31 when that's a fly to center. So boy, that whole uh, that whole inning, I didn't even need the book for that entire inning. I knew exactly what it was before I even looked, just based on the rolls. So either it's oversimplification or I'm getting better at it, one or the other. All right, here's Oil Can Boyd, and his fatigue is a 30. So he's still in good shape. He's only faced 21 batters. So. Here's Reggie. 24 is a 13. Another one I didn't have to look at the book for. As he goes down on strikes. Here's the Sensei. Game plays fast when you don't have to look. 24 is 30. That's a fly to left. So boy, we're just playing speed app up here. Rupert Jones. 13 is a 14. That's a walk. Didn't have to look at that either. All right, maybe I'll just do away with the boards and the book and just play with the cards. How about that? 55 for Grits. Now, we'll need it for that because we got an 8. He's a minus 4 against righty, so it turns him to a 14. So a runner on first. Can a 14 stop an 8? Yes, it can. 8 changes to 32, which, of course, is the fly to right. And that's going to end the inning. 
So we've played six complete, and it's two to one in favor of the Sox. Now Corbett will be coming out for his second inning of work. Two innings is usually going to be probably be his max. We'll see though. Depends on how effective he is. He only faced three batters. Here's Armas. 36 for Armas is a 33. And of course we know that is a pop-up to second. Well, I don't know that until we look. 32 was the extent of my memory. So let's pop out to second. If he has a Y, it's a strikeout. He does not. So let's pop out to second. And Mr. Armas is out of there. Spike Owen, 31. That's a 9. And against a right-hander, he's a minus 3. Turns him to a 13. Can a 13 stop a 9? It cannot. It's a single. So a one-out single for Spike Owen. Brings up Ed Romero. Ed Romero. 25. 25 for Romero is a 9. He's a minus 4. Makes him a 14 with the runner at first. Can a 14 stop a 9? It cannot. It's a single runner to second. So back-to-back -back singles. Puts runners at first and second for Marty Barrett. 56 is a 34 with runners at first and second. And a 34 pop out to third. So that keeps the runners right where they are for out number two. So now it's Billy Buck. Billy Buckner. He is a minus nine against lefties, plus two against righties. Do they bring in the lefty? Or do they go, you know what, they're going to bring in the lefty. They're not going to take any chances. When you're down 2-0, you can't afford it. you got to play every game like it's the seventh game. So lefty Gary Lucas is coming on for Corbett. Lucas is an 11. And let's check his qualities. He is a Y and a Z. But more importantly, and let's see here, Corbett goes an inning and two-thirds. More importantly, it turns Buckner from a plus two to a minus nine, so that could be very important based on the rolls. So runners at first and second, two down. Here's Buckner, 13, and that's a 37. 37 is a strike. So we have a one strike count. Step back in there, it's a 23, that's a 12. 12 is first on fielder's choice. He doesn't have a W, so it's not a walk. So runner out at second. Doesn't say who it was hit to though. That's the weird part. Um, yeah, the Marino, Marino boards don't show that. Let me see what the basic book says. Runners at first and second with a 12. First and second with a 12. Shortstop to second is what they're showing in the basic book. So we'll do a 6-4 fielder's choice. I'll live with that. Fielder's choice, 6-4. to four. To end the inning. So Lucas pitches out of it. We go to the seventh inning stretch. Still 2-1 to one Red Sox. And Boyd still out there. He has faced 25 batters. He's allowed to go 30 before he gets tired. As we try to complete the seventh inning, here's Schofield. 33, though. Doubles won't, may not help uh, Boyd. Second roll for Schofield is a 25. That's a home run. Look at that. Schofield a 1 on a 25. We have a tie ball game, folks. Dick Schofield goes deep. And oil can Boyd can't believe it. McNamara getting the bullpen going here. Is Bob Stanley loosening? Here's Boone, 35. Is a 38, and a 38 is a ball. So one ball count. 34. That is a 31, which we know is a fly to center. So one away. Let's move this over here so you can see the score sheet a little bit better, maybe. One away for Gary Pettis. 2-2 game here in the 7th. 35 is a 40, and that's a foul, unless he's got a W, it would be a walk, but it's a foul. Reboot, 35, 35 is a 40, and that's another foul, so we've got a two-strike count on him. 44, fought that off, it's an 8. Minus 1 makes that a 9. 
I don't think a nine's going to stop an eight. It does not. It's a single for Gary Pettis. He singles. Now, he's definitely a threat to steal. So let's look at the stealing chance table. And let's do some calculations. Pettis, his steal rating is a 31. And let's see, Boyd, his MF rating is a plus one, which is going to mean a minus one to Pettis. So that drops him to a 30. Gedman, his arm, check Gedman's arm. Gedman's throwing arm is a plus five. So that's going to lower him even more. So that's a total of minus six. That's a 25. So if we go to the chance table, a 25. 25. Right here, you need a 51 or less. So he's going to roll it and see if he can get it. A 51 or less, he steals. He does not. 53 gets thrown out. So took the chance and it did not pay off. That's out number two and a big one. As he gets erased in front of Wally Joyner. So here's Joyner. 24, and that is a 13. Struck him out to end the inning. And that's going to be all for Boyd. He's going to go seven, and that's going to do it. And we are tied at two apiece. But Rich Gabin made the big defensive play, throwing out the swift Pettis. And I hope I did that stolen base thing right. If I didn't, please let me know. That's just the way I was... I looked into doing that so hopefully it's correct all right now bottom of i'm sorry top of the eighth jim rice the batter against lucas 14 we know what that is at the 30 which is a fly to left all right here's Taylor. 34 that is a 31 that's a fly to center dwight evans 64, that is a 22. 22, we're checking the catcher, which is Boone. He's a 1, and so it's a 2-3 ground out instead of an error. So good play there by Boone. It's going to end the inning. It's going to be all for Lucas. He is done. He goes an inning in the third. And then Donnie Moore will come in and pitch the ninth for the Angels. All right, we go to the bottom of the eighth, and a new pitcher coming in for the Sox. And it will be Bob Stanley. Bob Stanley. And Stanley is, as a, as a starter, he's a 4. But as a reliever here in parentheses, he's a 5. And that's what it means here. DC grade. He's a better reliever than he is a starter. So he's a 5 with a Y and a Z. So a 5. Stanley, a Y and a Z. And oil can goes seven innings, gives up the two runs. One was a homer. And we'll figure the rest out later. But right now we are tied here in the bottom of the eighth for Brian Downing. 24. 24 is 13. Struck him out. One away for Reggie Jackson. 62. That is a 40, which is a foul ball. One strike count on Reggie. 54. 32, we know that's a fly to right. So two down. And there are exceptions that if the pitcher had a K, they'd be, these would be strikeouts, not flyouts. But very few pitchers have the actual K quality. 14, we know that's a fly to left. Don't even have to look. It's pretty obvious. I seem to roll a lot of 14s for some reason. And that's going to end the inning. We go to the top of the ninth. So picture perfect inning for Stanley. He helped them do things right. And now, Gedman is coming up. And actually, Lucas is going to stay in. If, uh, I was premature there. Lucas is going to stay in and pitch to Gedman. I was kind of premature there. But with the lefty up there, he's going to stay in and pitch to Gedman. So Lucas will pitch to Gedman. 55. Maybe he shouldn't have. That's an 8. But he is a minus 11. So that's where that helps. So that turns him to a 22. And a 22 will stop the 8. 22 will turn the 8 into a 30, which is a fly to left. So now I'll do this. That was a mistake putting that there. All right, now with Armis coming up, they will now go to Donnie Moore. So we make Lucas now an inning and two-thirds. Kind of mess that up a little bit. Should do this in pencil, maybe. All right, here's Donnie Moore. And Moore is a 13. And he is an X and a Z. Donnie Moore. 
All right, and what the socks are going to do is they're going to counter with the pinch hitter, and the pinch hitter is going to be none other than Dave Henderson, and we know what kind of history these two had, but he's also a better defender. He is a two versus a one, so Henderson is going to pinch hit for Armas, who did nothing. He was 0 for 3, so Henderson will pinch hit. And then he will stay in the game to play center, which where he is a two, and he's fast rather than slow. So a couple of different things there. And Tabby's crying too for some reason. I don't know. Does she, you not like that move, Tabby? I thought it was a, a brilliant managerial move by John McNair. 62 is a 13. That's how brilliant it was. He struck out. So Donnie Moore gets his revenge on Dave Henderson. Spike Owen, 25, is a 9. He is a minus 3, makes him a 16. Can a 16 stop a 9? It cannot. It's a base hit. So a 2-out single for Spike Owen. 2-out single by Spike Owen. Keeps the inning going. And he is fast. I wonder if he can steal. He's a 20. He's a 20. Boone, though, I bet has a good arm. Boone, his arm is a plus 6. That knocks him down to a 14. So, on a 14, I'm not going to give him a good percentage. you got to be a 32 or less. So, I think they're going to issue the stolen base. And we'll turn over to Ed Romero. 61 is a 27. 27 is a... Well, if he's got an X, it's a strikeout. He does, so it is a strikeout of Romero. Sorry, hitting the stand there, trying to ride around it. Kind of gets in my way. All right, bottom of the ninth, we go. Still tied at two, Bob Stanley, who's used to be on the field for walk-offs by the other team. And he's going to be out there now facing Rupert Jones, Doug Gritch, or Bobby Gritch, rather. And Dick Schofield. I don't know who Doug Rich is. Alright, 26 for Rupert is a 32, which is the standard fly to right. One away. Rich, 51, is a 9. He is a minus 4. Makes him a 9. So a 9 to a 9. 9 and a 9. That He does stop it. That's a 34, which turns into a pop out to short. But with a Y, it's a strikeout. So not only does he not get the hit, he gets the strikeout. So Gritch is out of there. And we're one out away from extra innings. Here's Schofield. 22. 22 is a is a, a 8. Minus 5 makes him a 10. Can a 10 stop an 8? No, it cannot. It's a single for Schofield. So a two-out single keeps the bottom of the ninth going for Bob Boone. 46 is a 27. 27 is a, well, if he's got an X, it's a strikeout. He does not. He has a Y. So instead, it is a fielder's choice 5-4 ground out to end the inning. So we got extras. Free baseball here in California. We go to the top of the 10th. Donnie Moore back out. And he'll be facing Marty Barrett. Second inning of work for Mr. Donnie Moore. 26. 26 is a 27. And that is a 5-3 ground out. Unless it's an X, which he does. It is a strikeout. So strikeout to start the 10th. And Buckner. 22. 22 is a 0. So that's why we didn't take Buckner out for defense yet. He wanted his hitting. So that's a 0. 15. That's a 1. It's gone. Home run. Bill Buckner. Billy Buck. Home run. Billy Buck. <coughs> and 11's not going to come anywhere close to stopping that. So Buckner homers. And immediately, Dave Stapleton has gotten up off the Red Sox bench and is throwing down in the bullpen just to get his arm loose because he's coming in to play first base in the bottom half. Here's Rice. And Chiraldi's loosening in the Red Sox pen. 53 for Rice is a 15. 
15 is a single to left. We're checking the left fielder. And if he's a fielding column 3, which is what downing is, then it's a single and an error on downing, so he takes second. So a single by Rice, and then the E7 gets him to second base. So the Angels imploding here in desperation mode. About to go down three games to none. Here's Baylor. 42 is a 13. That's a strikeout. That'll help a little bit. Two down. They got to keep the extra runs off. It can't keep it down more than one. Here's Evans, 55, that's trouble, it's an 8, he's a 0, so 13, can a 13 stop an 8? It can, barely, 26, it's a ground out, second base to end the inning, so Donnie Moore was just able to stave that off, but the home run from Bill Buckner could be the difference in the ball game. We go to the bottom of the 10th, and it is... A 3-2 Red Sox lead, and Mr. Buckner will take a seat, and Mr. Stapleton, with his four defense, will be coming on. So Stapleton will take over at first, and now i got to see if that changes their defensive prowess to, because we've upgraded here and here, they may now be a, a defensive rating one, although they did lose one here. So that's a 4, that's 12, 16, 18, 21, 28, 30, 38, and the pitcher, Giraldi. Let's see what Giraldi's pitching defense is. He is a 2, that makes him a 40. So that's still fielding column 2. You have to have a 41 to be fielding column 1. So there's still a fielding column 2, but they do have Giraldi in. To pitch the bottom of the ninth. He's got a K. He's one of the few people that had that K quality. He's got a Z, and he's also an 18. So, could be lights out for the Angels. He'll be facing the top of the order with uh, Gary Pettis coming to the plate. So, it's up to the top of the Angels order to get it done. If they want to go to their bench, let's see what they have on the bench for pinch hitters. Probably not a whole lot. Uh, we'll take a look, see and see. Yeah, they got George Hendrick. They got Rob Wilfong. Wilfong not very good. Hendrick is a 272 hitter. So is Howell. So we'll see. Right now, Pettis is a 268 hitter. So they want to. Plus, he can run. So if he can get on, he could steal maybe. 34. Although he did get caught last time. 34, 31. That is a fly to center. So he's gone. One away. And here's Wally Joyner. 31. 31 is a 9. He is a plus 3. Makes him a 15. So a 15 to a 9. Cannot stop it. It's a base hit. Joiner. The tie and run now. And that brings up Brian Downing. 45 is a 14. But he does have a Z. So it's a 2 ball count. Reboot. 26 is a 32. We know 32 is that fly to right field. So that's out number two, down to the last out, and it's Reggie Jackson, Mr. October. The only thing preventing the Angels from being down three games to none. 62 is a 40, and that is a ground out. First base unassisted, and that's gonna be in the ball game. As Stapleton, the new third baseman, or new first baseman, stepped on the bag, took care of it, and the inning is over. And so is the ball game. Three to two, favor of the Sox, as they now take a three games to none lead. Winner was Oil Can Boyd. I'm sorry, the winner was Bob Stanley. The save goes to Chiraldi, and Donnie Moore took the tough luck loss. So three games to none. Definitely an uphill climb to make for the Angels in game four so this could be a very short-lived series we shall see hope you enjoyed that presentation of APA baseball I'm not the best at the rules on this with the Marino boards some of the things still a little quirky for me that I have to check on um, tabletop Earl is one of those more, more of an expert than me obviously I still like to play it once in a while just to be different so hope you enjoyed that and until next time we will see you all
down the road.